Welcome to the Get Fit Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Get Moving and Shape Up. My name is Brock Armstrong and I'm the Get Fit Guy. Running can be a transformative activity for many of us, and it can certainly help us reach our fitness goals, but it can also be limiting to our overall movement goals. But by rethinking our running habits, we can maximize running's benefits and minimize its shortcomings, and I'm going to talk about that today. Now, running bestows a broad range of health and fitness benefits, but those benefits are limited when you run the same way every single day. For instance, if you run on a path at the same speed, listening to your MP3 player at the same time of day on the same slope in the same shoes for the same distance, well, you are robbing yourself of some of the benefits that you could be getting from all that valuable movement time. There are many variables that affect the benefits your run can give you, and you know what? We rarely take the time to think about it. So, to help you spice up your running efforts and make sure that you reap the full rewards from each and every run workout, here are some ways to make your run workout more challenging and more beneficial. The 10 tips we're going to cover today are number one, vary your terrain. Number two, run somewhere new. Number three, run in a group. Number four, <laughs> stop and smell the frickin' roses. Number five, wear different shoes. Number six, run tech-free. Number seven, try multitasking. Number eight, carry something. Number nine, vary your speed. And finally, number 10, run more often. Now, let's explore each of those tips in detail. And let's start with number one, vary your terrain. There are 33 joints in each of your feet, and when you run over rocks and roots, slopes, dips, and bumps, each one of those joints deforms your foot <laughs> in a good way. This deformation creates loads in those parts of your feet, and that load bearing makes your feet and your ankles stronger and more resilient and healthier in general. But if you always run on man-made services, well, there's nothing that will destabilize or mobilize those joints. So you're missing out on some of the real run benefits by limiting your terrain. Whenever you can, add in hills, slopes, textures like dirt, gravel, and sand that will challenge your ankles, your heels, and your toes in the ways that just don't happen on flat and paved ground. Now, the second tip is run somewhere new. Running in familiar territory can automatically change your responsiveness, both cognitively and physically, and can allow you to fall into what I would call a movement rut. I mean, let's face it, mindless robotic running is not our goal. To minimize this issue, choose different routes, surroundings, directions, and distances. And if you simply can't mix it up, at least run the same route in a different direction so you get as many surprises as you can. Do anything you can that will help shake you out of being a dull running machine and into being an enthusiastic running human. Now tip number three is run in a group. Running with others can often force you out of your comfortable pace, and that change of pace can result in your body working in different ways. Not only will running at different speeds widen your cardiovascular response to the workout, but it also engages different muscles and different geometry of your limbs and makes you a more well-rounded runner in general. Running in a group also means being social, and that can change your mood for the better. It's easy to focus on how tired you are or how much you want this run to be over when you are alone, but when you're engaging in conversation or some friendly competition, perhaps, the time can really fly by. Now, tip number four is stop and smell the frickin' roses. Staying in your running pose for the entire run, well, it isn't as beneficial as breaking up that repetitive movement with some counter movements, and this can be as simple as taking a short walk break where you shake out your arms and deliberately take larger steps to release your hip flexors. But to really make the most out of your full range of motion, you can throw in some squats, walking lunges, side gallops, jumping jacks, burpees, or even just drop and give me 20. 
Or if you're out on a pleasure run rather than a specific training run, why not actually stop running and examine those berries that are growing on the side of the trail or give that friendly dog a chin scritch or literally stop and smell the roses. Tip number five is wear different shoes. When I was a serious runner and was putting in over 100 kilometers per week, I actually had four pairs of shoes that I cycled through. A minimalist pair that helped me build and maintain some foot strength, a cushioned pair for my longer runs, some racing flats for my speed work, and another pair that, well, <laughs> I just liked the look of and I wore those to the gym. Now, shoes with a narrow toe box can reduce how much you use the muscles that allow your foot to widen as you put weight on it. When you do this, your toes should naturally splay away from each other. And if they aren't allowed to make this movement, at least some of the time, you could develop some foot issues. Also, a large heel drop on a shoe can change the range of motion that your ankles go through. Believe it or not, this affects your knees, your hips, your spine, all the way up to your neck and your head. Okay, tip number six, run tech free. Wearing technology every time you go out running can intrude on your mind's ability to give itself over to the body, which is when you really experience that feeling that's known as the runner's high. Plus, leaving your devices behind occasionally can free you from any preconceived notions that you have on how far or how fast or how long that you are actually able to run. Leaving your MP3 player behind can occasionally be helpful too. Learning to pace yourself using just your footsteps and the sound of your breath and the feeling of your stride is a great way to perfect your pace. It's also easier to be aware of your head position, your arm swing, your knee drive, and your footfall when you aren't mesmerized by the mad rhymes of the Beastie Boys. <laughs> a little too much? Okay. Number seven is try multitasking. Now, on the other hand, if you can run farther or more often while getting something else done while you run, well then indulge yourself in some tech every once in a while. Mixing your work time and run time is a great idea, and by taking a meeting on a run using some Bluetooth headphones or listening to an audiobook while you run or maybe even a podcast, well, it can help you learn something new while you run. There's even some dictation software that could allow you to write your next great novel while you run. Figuring out ways to be productive while you run means you may be inclined to make more time for it. And in my opinion, that is never a bad thing. Tip number eight, carry something. Now, stick with me on this one. Grab something moderately heavy right now and hold it in front of your torso. Now, make note of how that feels. Now, hold that same thing over your head. Feel that? Every way that we hold an object requires that we balance and rebalance with a particular set of muscles. When we change the position of what we're holding, we also change the muscles being used. And the same is true for the loads that we carry when we run. Backpacks, ankle weights, wrist weights, weighted vests, even the devices that we carry or strap to our arms and wrists change the muscles that we are using and how we're using them. If you never carry anything when you run, well, give it a try. If you always carry your phone, say, in your right hand, well, try carrying it in your left. And if you have access to ankle weights, well, try doing some short runs or even sprints with them on and see how it feels. This isn't an everyday type of idea, but mixing it up occasionally can make us better runners and better movers. And getting close to the end is number nine, vary your speed. We touched on this a little bit earlier, but not only will running at different speeds widen your cardiovascular response to your run workouts, but it'll also engage different muscles. Now, the problem is that new runners often go out for every single run at what is referred to as a tempo effort. They basically try and go as hard as they can for as long as they can and as often as they can. Not only is that not a lot of fun and not helpful for becoming a well-rounded runner or mover, but you will also hit your performance ceiling pretty darn quickly. One of the aspects that we avid runners struggle with is the idea of running 
easy on our easy days and hard on our hard days. Running truly easy seems like a waste of time, and running truly hard is, well, truly hard. So instead, we often remain in that middle ground and go kind of stagnant. Don't let this happen to you. Vary your speed, your pace, and your cadence during one particular run, and also from one run workout to another. And rounding it out at number 10 is run more often. If you always run once a day, most days of the week, and then spend the remainder of the day being sedentary, well, you are really limiting your fitness and your health and your general well-being. Breaking up the repetitive geometry of being sedentary has actually been shown to change things like arterial function, muscle length, and mood. While those extended long runs do bestow some positive health outcomes, there are still more benefits that you're missing out on due to the fact that you're doing all of your movement in one go. Try breaking up your run into smaller chunks and then intersperse them throughout your day. Or you can try running to your swim class and then jogging home. Running to a yoga session is a great way to arrive warm and ready to be flexible. Also, running is a great way to commute to and from work. Finding creative ways to both indulge your running habit and also expand its benefits on your body is a worthy endeavor. And I hope that you are feeling inspired to get out there and mix up your running routine so that you'll enjoy running for many more years to come. Now, don't forget that you can find this list and all the reasons why you should follow it over at getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com and look for episode 400. That's right. This is the 400th episode of the Get Fit Guy. And while I have only been the Get Fit Guy for just over a year now, this is pretty cool to hit number 400. So head over to getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com. And also go to facebook.com slash getfitguy or twitter.com slash getfitguy and send me a note or join in the conversation. Now, my name is Brock Armstrong, and I'm the Get Fit Guy asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. Get fit.